Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I want to talk to you about bourbon, because bourbon is hard to buy nowadays, there's just so many options. And frankly, if you know nothing about whiskey, you may very well be looking at scotch, you could be looking at Irish, you could be looking at bourbon, like you might not actually know what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and kind of just talk about some options for you to just go into any store today and go buy. I tried to keep these very readily available and you should be able to find them in your local liquor store. But I also broke them up into a few different categories just to help you kind of organize. But also I put in the description all of the different options along with a link to the review that I've done of each one of these because I've done a review on almost all but one of these. And then I also put a playlist if you just want to binge watch them all. So I care about you watching this video, but I care more about you buying something that's important to you. So go check out the description if you're in a hurry. All right, so the categories are best budget bourbon, best bourbons for beginners, best mid-priced bourbons, which are like $50 to $100, and then the wow factor. Now, I'm not going to do something silly like put Pappy Van Winkle on this list because first off, you can't get it. Second, it's insanely overpriced. Third, honestly, it's not all that great. But I also didn't put Blanton's and I didn't put Weller on here. All right, let's go ahead and get into the list. So best budget bourbons. If you're looking for a bourbon that's easy to find and easy on the wallet, there's three different options here. Now, this one's probably the hardest to find of the three, but if you look hard enough, you'll find it. So this is Buffalo Trace. It has all the quintessential bourbon notes like caramel, butterscotch, oak, um, honey, you know, a little bit. And it's just a very good bourbon. Also for the price, it's something that you could make cocktails out of if you wanted to, but I would recommend sipping this one neat. Next, you have the Elijah Craig uh, small batch. This is very good. I end up drinking this all the time. Um, that's why it's as low as it is. But I keep this around for emergency cocktails, which emergency, <laughs> but also just it's very good to sip neat. So I always have a bottle of that on my shelf. I actually have a second bottle up there as well. Um, next, I have the Knob Creek. Now this one, it's not everybody's jam because it's a bit oaky, but I don't find it unapproachable whatsoever. I think that this one is as popular as it is for good reason. And the Knob Creek is definitely a good option. It's also a little higher ABV. So it's going to be a little stronger, which some people might like. I do. <laughs> All right, next is best beginner bourbons. If you're looking to get a friend into bourbon, or maybe they drink from your collection all the time, in which case you probably already know what they like, so just get them that. But if you're looking to get a friend into drinking bourbon, I would suggest getting something in mid 40% ABV. Now the reason for this is 40% ABV is the minimum that you have to do in order to be bourbon. But 46%, I feel, is when a distiller really has done that on purpose. It's not 42 or 43, it's they went above and beyond. They actually made less money on that barrel in order to put out what they think is a better product. So. All three of the ones I'm talking about today, uh, I drank the other one, is 46%. So let's start with the one that's missing. So we have Maker's 46. Maker's 46 is just a really good whiskey. It's kind of the next evolution of Maker's Mark. Now, not everybody loves Maker's Mark. There's a weird taste to regular Maker's Mark in, to some people. But Maker's 46 is a fantastic whiskey. It is robust, it's delicious, and it's probably going to go off their shelf a little too fast. Next, we have Larson. This is 46% as well. I am obviously almost done with this. I tend to go through this one. I like to make cocktails with it. Even at that higher percentage, I tend to make cocktails. They just come out way better in my opinion, but I also like to drink this one neat. So if I'm looking for just an easy night where I'm not necessarily researching for a new video, I often pick up the Larceny. Next is another one that was a surprise to me. This is the Wild Turkey Long Branch. Now this is <laughs> actually made in... Um, uh, together with Matthew McConaughey, which is strange. Usually when celebrities get involved, it's not better. In this case, it actually really was. And Wild Turkey has a great pedigree. Everything from them, I really like. So that does it for beginner bourbons. Next for best mid-priced. So I did 50 to to $100 on this, and I don't love putting a price on bourbons only because I feel like it's an arbitrary way to add you know uh, a value to something as subjective as taste but that's fine either way these are all 50 to 100 dollars now first one is one that i definitely recommend you get this one is old forester 1920. now this one's going to continue to fly off my shelves i reviewed it for the first time this year and i regret putting it off as long as i did absolutely delicious whiskey also delicious whiskey they're all going to be delicious in this category uh, spoiler but angel's envy right this is finished in port casks and bourbon and port together are a magical combination combination. The bottle itself looks cool. Somebody would love to have it on their shelf. This is where marketing actually is held up by the quality of the product. Next. So this one's a little bit more complicated, but don't shut down on this. So we got Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Every year they put out three different batches. This batch, the one that I'm suggesting you get, is called Batch C921. And that's C for the third one, ABC. 
9 for the month it came out, September, and 21, which is the year it came out. Now, a friend of mine, uh, another whiskey tuber, his name's Clifton from Bourbon Bites, did a live stream where he did a blind taste of all three that came out this year, and he picked C921. So that's the one I'm recommending, because I personally actually haven't had it, but I believe that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof um, is always good, like almost always good. So if you want to check out his video up there, check it out up there. All right. Lastly is another one called Widow Jane. Now, Widow Jane, specifically Lucky 13. This one is one that I only just tried for the first time last week, and it stuck with me. It has a very unique taste that is pecans and grapefruit, which is a very strange combination to get in a bourbon. And it's something that is definitely going to stick out to the person that you buy it from. So if you can find that one, it's going to be a little bit harder to get, but it should be readily available. They're from New York, so they kind of ship all over the place, but, you know, keep your eye out for it. All right, next, let's do the wow factor. All right, so you want to drop some cash on a bottle. So good for you. You're really looking to kind of step it up. Now, I have a few different options here that are likely to be things that they have not actually drank before. First one that I'm going to talk about is barrel bourbon. So this is a blend of straight bourbons from all over the country. So what bur barrel bourbon does is they take all of these different barrels and they blend them together until they meet a flavor profile that they are trying to do on purpose. They have been knocking it out of the park. They have all different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be bourbon, but... You know, their bourbons are fantastic, but consider anything from barrel to be amazing. All right, next we have Remus Repeal Reserve. Now, remember earlier I mentioned that, you know, there's dozens and dozens of bottles on the shelf and many of them are going to be the same. Well, many of them are the same because a lot of them get their whiskey from this company called MGP. And I'll spare you a lot of the details. You can see a video up there if you want to. But more so, Remus did their own thing. So they're not just making it for other people. This is them making it for themselves. So you know it's going to be good, and it is very good. So each one of the Remus Repeal Reserves have been fantastic. This one might be sold out by the time that you see this video. Maybe not, maybe. I think I saw it just the other day. But it's going to be a little harder to get. But we're also talking higher prices. So consider getting the Remus Repeal Reserve, and the people that you buy it for are going to love it. Try to get yourself a sip yours, uh, as well. All right, so Joseph Magnus is another choice. I really like this one. Joseph Magnus actually has three different expressions. I would recommend one of two. Um, all three are fine, but the two that you should look for, number one, the cigar blend, which sells out pretty quickly. But if you see it, scoop it up. This one's usually pretty easy to get. This is the triple cask, right? So it goes into just bourbon barrels, you know, so white oak. Then you have sherry barrels and then cognac barrels as well. This is gonna run you about a hundred bucks though. And it is such a wonderful flavor. I actually have very little of this left because I keep sharing it with everybody. <laughs> but the reason I have so little left is because at this point, I want to keep it all to myself. Um, but you're really going to like the Joseph Magnus if you get it. Lastly, so you might be surprised to see Jack Daniels here. But Jack Daniels actually makes some really good stuff. I mean, everybody knows Jack number seven. It's one of the most popular whiskeys in the world. But you might not have known that they do actually some pretty top tier things. Now, these are very high ABV. So be warned, it's basically drinking like 60 something percent ABV. So the single barrel barrel proof is something that you'll be able to find. It's got it's it's almost like you take Jack number seven, take anything bad out of it and then just hyper inflate all of the really good parts. This is a bottle I really, really like, and I sh probably need to take it off my top shelf because I keep forgetting it's there and I keep not drinking it. <laughs> I hope this video has been really helpful to you. If you are looking for some advice, I'm absolutely all over the comments. And if you ask, I'll probably respond. So if you want some help picking out a specific bottle, go ahead and give me a comment. Try to tell me as much about the person as you can, and maybe I'll help you pick something. But in return, what I'd like you guys to consider doing, so this is called the Whiskey Dictionary. It's a product that I make, and it's really, really good for anybody who's learning to really get to know whiskey. So the idea is that it has all these little graphs and stuff, ways to really focus your mind on what you're tasting, smelling, and experiencing. So if it's something that you want, it's a great stocking stuffer, and I sell them on my store. You can find a link in the description below. But thank you, everybody, for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy your bourbon, and have a great rest of your day. Cheers.